for your first wager of the week. Clemson is at North Carolina State. North Carolina State is plus 10. The total is 44. Clemson is 4-3. and three. They lost to Miami last weekend, 28-20. Yes, they to 20. Uh, they, they've only covered two other seven games so far this season. NC State is 4-3. and three. They're also 2-5 and five against the spread. NC State's off a bye. They lost last to Duke, uh, 24-3 in their last game. Bear, what do you got here? Yeah, I'm looking at the NC State team total under 16 and a half. Now, I am banking on the fact that Clemson is not going to throw in the towel here after giving that game away in South Florida last week against Miami's backup quarterback yeah. and losing that under and losing the Miami team total under was part of a very, very bad evening for me uh, <laughs> last week. Um, happy my alma mater won, but not happy that I was. How about Kate Klubnick just deciding to keep the ball for himself in that play? Like you can do that. If you score a touchdown, like for example, I know I very Oregon centric at times, but you know, Bucky Irving's long touchdown run against Washington state. That was him doing his own thing, but he scored a touchdown. Right. Like you can do that. If you score a touchdown, you can't pull a ball like that and not score a touchdown right. like that. You, that's just you, bad football. You, you just put, give yourself the best opportunity to score. Yeah. But like NC state, you go, you go back to that. Like the offensive showing against Duke was, uh, is, is abysmal. You thought maybe yeah. that Marshall game with, with MJ Morris, a quarterback, maybe there were some signs, but if you look at their, their ACC play, 10 against Louisville, three against Duke, yeah. It slid by Virginia 24 21. Like, I'm, ba I'm banking on Dabo being able to rally them. Hey, we keep it, be proud, Clemson be, be, program, keep it going. Like, you win that at the regular season, you yeah. win the bowl game, you win 10 games again, despite yeah. everything. Is, so, I, I think that that's going to be kind of like the rallying cry. Now, we'll see if Clemson, A, is talented enough to do it, and B, yeah. if, if those players on defense are invested, but that defense is still really good. So I'm going to go under 16 and a half here for uh, the Wolfpack team total. A note here, NC State is 98th in the country right now, points per drive at offense. Yeah, and as you not, mentioned, the, the last two defenses that are comparable to Clemson, three points to 10 points. So uh, I'm with you here. Next game here, we're going to the, the Big 12, a new Big 12 team, BYU at Texas. Texas is a 17.5 point favor. The total uh, is 50 and a half. BYU, BYU is five and two. They're two and two in the Big 12. They just beat Texas Tech uh, 27 to 14. They're three and four against the spread this season. Texas is six and one. They squeezed by Houston last weekend on the road, and Texas is three and four against the spread this season. They're also without their starting quarterback. Yeah, I don't think Ewers being out is a massive deal. Yeah. Uh, this week, I, I I think Malik Murphy will be just fine. I think the coaches are very confident in him. I think maybe they have maybe have a couple of other injuries, uh, much that are more minor compared to Ewers. But I, I think Ewers short term, if he's out, I think they're going to be okay uh, with Murphy. And, and I think the defense will take it upon themselves to to really carry this team. If they got a twenty one nothing last week on yeah. Houston right out of the gate, and I think they're probably out, okay. This game's over, and then tone of the game changed. Yeah. Um, so, so, so I, I think they'll get up again. I don't think that they will fall asleep on the lead. I think the defense uh, will play well. I think the offense will run the ball very, very well. But M M Murphy has a cannon. I don't think they'll maybe will be as up-tempo or whatever. Yeah. But at, at, at the same time, I think that receiver play, the running game. And, and BYU, B BYU, when they went on the road to TCU a couple weeks ago, they lost like 44-10 or whatever it was. So, like, and that's not a very good TCU no. team at all. So, uh, I, I think defensively, uh, this is going to be a very bad matchup for, for BYU here. Worth noting, BYU's offense has a third and out and over a third of their drives, which is not good. No. Especially against a good Texas team. And they're near the bottom of the sport and exposed to play rate. You just can't, you can't have a lot of three and outs and then not be able to push the ball right. down the field if you're BYU. Uh, so I, I think this is low scoring, right? But probably somewhere in the 31 to six range, something like that, I imagine, right? That, yeah, that yeah. seems logical. Yeah. Um, all right. Next up, a big matchup with the SEC. Yes. Florida, Georgia. Georgia favored by 14 and a half. Total is 47 and a half. Feels a tad low for this game. Florida is five and two. Two straight conference wins are three and four against the spread. Georgia is 7 0, as we know. They've only covered a single game this season. However, that was the game they wanted to win the most, was the, mm -hmm. was the Kentucky game. Where are you going here? Well, we all knew Florida would be controlling its destiny to get to the SEC title game at this <laughs> yes. point in the year, especially <laughs> after, you know, I was gonna say, especially after looking so good in Salt Lake on the uh, the opening night of the season. But I laid the points here with Georgia. Uh, you hit on it. Like the game against Kentucky, everybody was like down on Georgia. Are they really number one? Um, Kentucky's defense, Devin Leary. They, this is an opportunity where I think Georgia could be uh, on upset alert, and they came out and played 
uh, their best game of yep. the year. Uh, it's the first game that they'll play full uh, since the Brock Bowers injury. And, and, and Kirby Smart hit on this earlier in the year. Like people were calling for, why isn't Brock getting the ball more? And Kirby came out and basically said, like, when the injury happened now, like, this that was by design early in the year to get some of the other players involved that way. If we were in a situation where we needed someone else to make a yeah. player, we didn't have brought like these guys are prepared now. Now they're prepared, they're ready, they have experience, and sure, you don't want to be without your your best player and biggest offensive threat. But 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 I think what what went on earlier in the year now, their offense will be better. Beck is improving uh week by week. And I, I just have no no faith in that in that Florida defense yeah. at all. We we we've seen South Carolina put up a bunch of points. I, I think Georgia could put up a big number. I think what the last two years have been 42 20, yeah. 34 7. Like uh, the, the, the talent gap is still there. The Kentucky game plan against Florida is what Georgia's going to do. They're going to run the football, right? Yeah. And, and they're going to protect Carson Beck as best they can. Uh, they've had now a couple weeks to, to get ready f- without Bowers there, right? So they can, I think, I'll formulate a, a game plan to, to get going here. But I go back to the point I made about Georgia and Kentucky. Like, when Georgia, the last couple of years, has wanted to, to win the game. Like, when they've tried their heart, they beat everyone's ass, and they've beat them by a lot. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds, and let's celebrate all of our wins together.